This tutorial explains how to use the path function in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you several examples for the application of the path function. And in the first example, I want to show you how to use the path function to create a grid of plots. And we can do that as you can see in line two of the code. So in this line of code, I'm applying the path function in combination with the MF row argument. And I'm setting the MF row argument to be equal to a vector of two values. And the first value in this vector specifies the number of rows of our grid of plots. And the second value in this vector specifies the number of columns in this grid of plots. So if you run line two of the code, our par options are updated. And you can see that by creating multiple plots, as you can see in lines four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So if you run line four of the code, the first plot is created. And as you can see, this plot is already shown at the top left of our grid of plots. And then if we continue to execute the other lines of code, you can see that our grid of plots is created one by one. So after running lines four to nine of the code, you can see that we have created a grid layout with six different plots. And this grid layout was specified by the path function and the MF row argument. So if we want to set our options back to the default specifications, then we can apply the def of function as you can see in line 11 of the code. So after running this line of code, the plot layout that we have created before has been removed and the options of the path function have been set to the default specifications. So in the next example, I want to show you how to apply the path function to change the margins around our plot. So in this case, we are using the path function in combination with a mar argument and we need to set four values to the mar argument so the first value sets the margins at the bottom of the plot. The second value sets the margins at the left side of the plot. The third value changes the margins at the top of the plot. And the fourth value changes the margins at the right side of the plot. So you can already see that the margins at the top and on the right side are relatively large. So if you run line 13, our options are updated and you can see that by creating one plot at the bottom right in the RStudio window by running line 15 of the code. And then you can see that we have created only one plot. However, you can also see that especially at the top of the plot and on the right side of the plot, the margins are relatively large. As in the first example, we can use the def of function to reset our par options. So if you run line 17 of the code, the plot at the bottom right is deleted and our options are set back to the default specifications. So in the third example of this tutorial, I want to show you how to use the path function to change the background color of a plot. And we can do that as you can see in line 19 of the code. And in this line of code, we are using the BG argument of the path function. And in this case, we are setting this argument to be equal to yellow. So if you run line 19 of the code, our options are updated once again. And you can see that by creating a plot. And we can see that as you can see by running line 21 of the code. So if we run this line of code, you can see at the bottom right that we have created a new plot. And this plot has a yellow background. So once again, it makes sense to remove the updated options that we have just specified to make sure that the following plots that we might want to create are created based on the default specifications. So after running line 23 of the code, our options are reset once again. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there.
If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.